know I already went live today, but this is bursting out of my soul and I gotta get it out. This has been on my mind all day and I wanna talk about disordered eating, caloric restriction, tracking food. These are my thoughts. You guys can tell me what you think. I've been reflecting on this so much and I'm like, I get it. I definitely get it from a coaching perspective why we put people on calories, macros, and I do it too. I have some of my clients on tracking food right now, not all of them. I'd say probably less than half of them right now are tracking, but I do do it. But every time, dude, pretty much every time, I all I can think about is I'm like, what are we teaching people? What are, what are we doing? I, I really think about this because I'm like, okay, so while there's value in it in a certain way, like you're learning, oh my God, like I didn't realize like there were these components and food that like do different things in my body, right? Like, wow, okay, proteins for like building muscle and it's not really stored as body fat and like fats for like my brain and my hormones and you know, cell membranes. Okay, cool, I get it and I kind of don't need as much of that if I'm not keto. And then, oh, carbs, okay, those help with athletic performance and their energy, like there's that cool side of tracking, right? And kind of like learning and just becoming aware of what you're eating and how much you put in your body. Okay. So I'm not saying there's not value in it, but <laughs> how many, like, I would like to see the after the after picture for most people who have gone through months, years of tracking food. Like what, what is the crossover into regular life? What is the mentality that that person takes into their life when they don't track anymore. That's what I want to talk about because that is a delicate thing because I think I was like, damn dude, I was telling my daughter today. I was like, I bet the nutrition industry is responsible for creating more disordered eating than it has healed. <laughs> Truly because most people can't, they, they don't get to a healthy place with it. They get to, should mentality. I should be eating this and I'm not and I suck and I'm a loser and I can't do it and it's too hard and I effing give up and frick it. I'm not, I'm just, I can't be healthy. I can't keep up with this shit. Never mind. I'm just going to live my life and be happy because this shit sucks and I, like eff it. That's what most people who go through a phase of tracking are going to walk away feeling like traumatized. Like I never want to do that again. That shit sucked. And honestly, a lot, most people, most people, like m most of my clients are pretty honest with me because I don't like do some top down, like, did you do it? Like I'm real with them. And most people, unless we like really get into it, they, they, as soon as it gets hard, they stop tracking, right? So they track Monday through maybe Friday and then Saturday they go to like a luncheon and then something and then uh, and they're like, F it, never mind, and blah. And they miss Saturday and Sunday, and they're like, well, shit. It's like, it reminds me of uh, Mega Mind. Have you guys seen that kid's movie? He's like, if I'm going to be bad, I'm going to be really bad. <laughs> and that's like why he turned into a villain, right? That's what it's like. It, it gets to that place where, and so what do we have there? We have disempowerment. We have, I can't do it. It's too hard. So I guess I just suck to like disordered eating to like, now I'm going to eat all this shit that I probably wouldn't have eaten otherwise just because I was so freaking restricted all week. Now I'm going to go off the rails and eat all this garbage because this is my small window out of effing prison, right? That's what most people. And so then they go back to whatever life they go back to. They have this mentality, this story that in order for me to be healthy, I have to go back to shitty. I have to go back to like really hard and disempowered and hate all that. There's very few people, and this is what I work on with my clients, and that's why I take them off of tracking because there's very few people who I feel like by themselves get to a place where they're like, oh, that was interesting feedback for me, but I can eat whatever I want and I choose to eat whatever feels good to me and my body. No, dude, most people do not get to that place. They get to either, there's like the chronic trackers. They've literally been tracking every morsel of food that goes into their mouth for years and years and years. And dude, I've heard, I've heard many people, they're like, hey, you know, that works for some people. I'm like, no, what effing doesn't, dude. That does not work for some people. 
That is disordered eating. That is way too much, way too much of your life being spent on food tracking. It does not have to be like that. And so I just had to share this because I'm like, I'm concerned, dude, because I'm like, yeah, it's really nice for coaches. I know slam effing dunk, slam dunk as a coach for my business, for my ego, for my reputation and all of that. It's a slam dunk. Just have everybody track, be super hard on them. Did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? Come on. What's the matter with you? Come on, get your head in the game. Like, let's go. Like, do you want this or do you not? You know, like I could do that every single time and then have all these like awesome, really fast before and afters and boom, I'm like the best freaking coach in the world. And then what? And then what for that person? That's the question. Like I'm, I'm hella fucking concerned. I'm not going to lie because I don't think that teaching people an unsustainable lifestyle without any sort of guidance on how to maneuver that into more of an intuitive eating approach afterwards is good for people. And even during the course of it, like there has to be some mindset component to this tracking thing too. I tell my clients every single time, I'm like, listen, I need your feedback. If you're getting to that point where like Friday comes, Thursday comes, and you're like, I can't effing do this anymore. This freaking sucks. I need to know that because we need to adjust some things, right? Um, were you at lunch with my friend today? Oh, no. <laughs> we, you guys had this same conversation? That's crazy. It must be going around the u- universe because I was like, I didn't want to go live again because I already went live, but it was like, go effing live. So maybe this will help somebody out there. So this is my, this is my advice. If you are going to track your food, look at it only as discovery and feedback for you, the like omnipotent being that houses this body, okay? It is just feedback. You are not like a little kid that is now like under the prison of this is all you get today, Tara. You just get this and deal with it. It's just feedback, okay? Just look at it as feedback. Notice if you're playing with macros. Hmm, that's interesting. I've noticed when I go like higher fat, I actually don't feel as good when I go with more carbs or I feel terrible with carbs. I definitely feel better on keto or like whatever. It's just feedback. It's just feedback. It is not like a, a death sentence. And I know, I mean, probably some of you on this live who has like PTSD from like super extreme dieting efforts. It's so intense, right? And so we need to approach this with a little bit more putting the power in the person, right? And recognizing, recognizing. Here's the other thing. I've been trying to say this for so many years and I don't think, I'm I'm going to explain why I talk about eating more protein and fiber because what I'm trying to do is help you get to the calorie deficit that that's all you hear you know, for most like diet coaches, it's like you got, it's all about calories. If you can't lose weight without caloric restriction, which in a way is true, but they're not really looking at hormones and satiety and all these factors. What I'm trying to do is take something that seems very restrictive and I'm trying to get you those exact same results by doing it in a way that is positive and proactive. Okay. Because if you're eating more protein and fiber, you are going to eat more naturally at a calorie deficit without thinking I'm restricting calories. Does that make sense? And not to mention they're chock full of nutrients, which impacts your satiety, right? So you can go the tracking route. It's, it's an interesting journey to go on, but freak dude, if you're not just looking at it as feedback and it's like this prison that you're like failing, if you don't keep up with these demands and all this shit from tracking, try saying, okay, now I know what foods have protein. Now I know what foods have carbs. Now I know what foods have fats. Okay. So let me like shift this into an intuitive approach where I'm packing in the fiber, packing in the protein and adding fat, adding carbs, eating whole foods and training like a beast. And that's the last thing I'll say is like, I can't tell you how many people I know from the gym who will say little things and they have a lot of muscle and they'll be like, I kind of eat whatever I want. And that's, that's, I will say that's pretty much where I'm at. But we talk about, I've talked to several people about this. They're like, yeah, but when we say that, we're not talking about like Wendy's and McDonald's. Like I don't eat that shit. I eat as much as I want, but I eat real whole foods. And when you have more muscle, you have a lot of leeway, especially because you're a consistent person who gets into the gym and creates those hormone shifts in your body. 
that help you maintain your body weight all the time. Right? So it's it's a it's a process, but I'm I'm very concerned. I'm concerned about the emotional, the negative um, emotional impact of intensive dieting, calorie restriction, my life has to suck in order to be healthy. I feel like we're creating a lot of that in like the fitness nutrition industry. It's just, it's, it's so it, everything has to be hard, 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 sucky, sucky. And that's not what health is. Right? So uh, let's see. I'm pretty intuitive right now about what I want and just mentally calculate my protein intake. I basically eat the same thing Monday through Friday. Yeah. And I, I mean, I do what works for you. I eat all, you know, I have my clutch things, right? Like I love my yogurt bowls and I love right now I'm loving the F2 meals. Um, they're like keto meals and that's like my protein and fat and then adding carbs and things like that. I love hummus. I love cottage cheese. I love dipping like my junk food, <laughs> the healthy junk food, Siete Foods chips or like almond crackers in those. I love veggies. I love steak and all those things. Right. But Anyway, in a nutshell, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that I'm concerned that in our efforts to get results for clients, we in the nutrition industry are creating unsustainable approaches for people that have them thinking that they have to be in this all in or all out. I feel like nutrition coaching, a lot of it has created the all in all out mentality where it's like, this is so hard and shitty, but just never freaking mind. Right. And so if you are in that kind of phase, right, like you're trying really hard, please, like if you are super, super hungry one day, pack in nutrition, right? It's going to serve you so much better to just eat some more healthy food and just let it slide than to be in this super restrictive thing and you're ending up at some fast food place or the gas station or whatever at 10 o'clock because you just freaking can't do it anymore. And then you take the whole weekend off and you just eat like this madman because of an over restriction. Kelly, can you please, can you explain what it would be like to work with you? Yes, sure. So I would, I always say that 90% of my coaching is mindset. So here's how it works. When you work with me, we do a lot of stuff. So we do mindset, training, nutrition, and biohacking. So the first thing that my clients get is a neurotyping test link. And that's something that I do through Christian Thibodeau. That is amazing. Um, he's mentored me twice on this. I took a certification for it. And basically what neurotyping is, is you take a personality test and it helps, it helps us see what your dominant neurotransmitters are. So for example, somebody who is, we call it dopamine dominant. It really just means you're sensitive to dopamine. So a dopamine dominant person is driven, um, kind of like higher executive function. They kind of see what other people don't. I call them engineer brains. They're good at figuring things out. They're competitive. Um, so those, if you're sensitive to dopamine or dopamine dominant, that will manifest your personality, right? Adrenaline dominant people, they love lots of variety. They're kind of social chameleon. And so there's things that we can see in people's personalities that are reflective of their um, neurotransmitters, right? Our type threes are the anxiety people that want lots of control so they can avoid anxiety. They always have to know what to expect. You know, these are the clients that I, I got to have everything out in advance. They got to have every single question answered or they feel really anxious, right? Whereas a one, which is the super dopamine dominant people, they're kind of like, yeah, 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 I got it. Like, they don't want you to be that involved. So I coach people differently based off that personality profile, based on their neurotransmitters. And there's training aspects to that too. So dopamine dominant people are more um, connected to their nervous system. So they're more neurodominant. Um, adrenaline, the type twos, they're a little bit more muscular dominant, high muscular recovery. So I'll train them differently too. Type threes, because they need all that control, I got to do a lot of, they have to be, feel very, very secure that they know what they're doing. Am I doing this right? Is kind of, they're, they're form geeks. They're like, gotta know that they're doing it right before they'll execute all the way. Right. Whereas a type one, they're kind of like, I, like the football linebacker. They're like, I freaking got it, dude. You know? So I have to really push them in the neuro dominant and like kind of be a little bit more hands off on like letting them be the beast mode that they are. Whereas type three is polar opposite. Okay. So that's the first thing is neurotyping. 
Um, and then, um, I mean, gosh, it's, I don't want to bore you guys, but like there's a lot. <laughs> so, um, on the biohacking realm of things, we do blood, blood labs. I'm looking for major nutritional markers, inflammation markers, liver numbers, vitamin D, um, thyroid, all of those things. I want to see what's going on in there, right? So we can optimize internal health. We do hair mineral analysis as well. I want to see if there's any metals. I want to see if there's any mineral deficiencies, super big for thyroid and also just all sorts of things. Um, we do, if, if clients want to, they can do heart rate variability. Some of my clients wear aura rings. So that's a cool thing that we can do if we're working on sleep and stuff like that and recovery. Um, and let's see, then, um, for nutrition, um, I do different approaches. Depends on what the person needs, right? So it's like, um, I don't think if any of my clients are doing even close to the same thing, but I, I can do keto if needed. I have some clients on keto pretty much all the time. Um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have them on a higher protein, moderate fat and carbs, um, and then match their training to that and their neurotype. So it's a lot. <laughs> um, and then, um, on the mindset end of things, we do, you know, one-on-one -on -one calls. And also I put all my one-on-one -on -one clients into a group together and we two, do two zoom calls a week. So we do a mindset call on Mondays where we get into, um, one of our four peaks. So that's what we hit on personal development is our, ourselves, our relationship with ourselves, our spiritual connection. Do we have one? Um, we hit our physical peak, which is all health. And then personal peak is our, all of our relationships in our lives. Where are we? What's going on there? Because the, all of this impacts your health. If you just went through some traumatic divorce or like you hate your marriage or like you have some core family situation that's stressing you the hell out, or you hate everybody at work that I need to know that as your health coach, that totally impacts your stress levels and what's going to be happening in your physiology. And then we also do, um, our professional peak is like, are you happy in your career? What do you freaking want? My role is, and, and the mindset department is to ask questions, ask ex excellent questions, right? So when I hear something that's like, right, I just, I tune in and basically like tap into my higher self. And I'm just like, why do you feel like that? Why do you know? So I, I just facilitate questions for people. And I hear one of my gifts, I would say, is being able to hear when somebody is like showing up in a way that's dishonoring of them. And I can hear the truth from their soul, but they're like doing these little BS, like, but that's okay. Cause blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, dude, that's not okay. Like what, what's going on there? You know? <laughs> so, um, just kind of helping them get into alignment in their life and in their health, I'd say is kind of what I do for a living. Um, what else do we do? How's the app going? The app is going really well. Yeah, I keep asking for feedback on it. Like I'm hoping to get like criticism, but everyone's loving it so far. So the mindset journeys, people said they're enjoying. I've got like five more of those coming. They're being edited right now. So it's nature meditations because like one of my goals, you guys are going to be seeing a lot more retreats coming from me, by the way. One of my goals and one of my like biggest pulls from the universe is get people out in nature and connecting with others in the energy of unconditional love and let nature do their thing, do its thing with them. So we've got, um, I haven't announced this yet, but I'll kind of low key announce it in the middle of this live <laughs> for like the very few of you who hear it. But our next retreat is going to be on big Island in Hawaii in the spring. And then in the fall, we're going to be going to Sedona, Arizona. And I have like the dopest shit plan for these retreats. Like, Oh, I'm so excited. And so, yeah, my goal is to actually end up eventually to do four a year for all of our four peaks. So Hawaii will be focused on the physical peak. It's our health focus. And then we'll also do a lot of like personal transformation, deep work as well. Yeah. Nature and grounding. Hell yeah. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Um, the app, yeah. And the app is I'm pulling people into nature with the mindset journeys. Um, and so I legit, legit just like tap in, ask <laughs> and just like whatever I feel like I'm need to share for that. Um, journey. That's what we do. You love all my videos. Thank you so much. Oh, you're in Arizona. Okay. So I, I probably shouldn't say stuff like this cause I don't have it planned yet, but my goal for the Sedona retreat is to get Parangi and Anahata Ananda at that retreat. So that's what I'm working on. It's going to be our personal peak. So the spiritual connection, which no better place to do that than Sedona. <laughs> the energy there is insane. Um, will I meet with fit to fat to fit drew in Hawaii? I have been talking to him about that, so I don't have anything confirmed yet, but he did say that he would definitely be interested in doing something in collaboration with the retreat. So I'm thinking maybe like a hike with drew or something like that. So we'll see. Cause he is over there on big Island where we're going to be doing the retreat. I got some really cool shit. I like, I don't want to say, cause it's not like confirmed yet, but I can't wait to tell you guys. Cause it's like all of my energy and passion is like, 
I have like this huge notes in my phone and all of these things. It's like so synchronistic. All of these things are just coming into place. I cannot wait. It's so amazing there. Once my kids get older, I want to uh, go up more and hike. Yeah, the energy of Hawaii is so transformative. The land is so special and sacred there. And that's one of my purposes is like, I actually have, so my ex-husband is Polynesian. And so I've, in my adult life, I've had a lot of Polynesian friends and used to dance hula and <laughs> poi balls and all that stuff for like 15 years. And so I've become familiar with the um, Hawaiian culture and I love, they represent, the Hawaiian culture to me represents being connected to the land um, prioritizing what actually matters in life, relationships, connection, connection to the earth, connection to people. They have a more sacred outlook on life. And so one of my goals in that retreat is to introduce the people who come to this paradigm shifting way of thinking that the Hawaiian people have, like it's so much respect and honor and connection and love. And so that is one of the main purposes is like, I, I don't want us to just go and be like, hee hee ha ha, Hawaii so pretty. We're just going to take advantage. I want us to come and respect and humility and like learn from Hawaiian culture. Like, you know, like <laughs> more of a, Hey, may we come and learn? Thank you. You know? And so, yeah. And I'm really excited to see the volcanoes cause that's been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. So that will be really cool. And, um, yeah, the app, I've got a lot coming in the app. I have worked my effing ass off on that. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm going to need that Hawaii retreat because there's a lot, it is a lot of content going into that app this year, but I really, really wanted something affordable in my own little universe where I can say whatever I want. Yay. <laughs> so eventually I'll have my podcast in the app. Um, there are like forums and message boards in the app so you can communicate. Please take advantage of those if you're already subscribed. Um, we have my train like Tara challenge going. So if you want to see how I train, that's, you can do that with a seven day free trial and, and totally do that. Um, and then we have at home and gym workouts. I've got three months of each already in there. And what I'm working on now is, um, the first three months are beginner, intermediate and advanced, but by month four, I want everybody going. <laughs> so we're going. So if you're on beginner in month one, you're not going to be a beginner in month four where you're, you're good. <laughs> So we're going to hit it um, month four and like increase that intensity as we go. So that's what's happening in the app. There's recipes. There's like a million. There's keto recipes. All my TikTok workouts. If you guys follow me on TikTok and you like those workouts, they're all organized nicely. Thanks to my assistant, Daria, in the in the Coachera app. So I'm trying to make it like overwhelming amount of awesomeness for you guys in the app. And it's really cheap. It's 25 bucks a month or 250 for the year. Um. And then, yeah, if you want more individualized attention, obviously that's higher, but, um, obviously I can't coach everybody at once, <laughs> but if you really want to dive in, like we effing dive in, like I will be getting all up in your soul. We're not just, it's not just training and nutrition and biohacking stuff. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, that's, I won't, I won't coach anybody individually unless they're willing to dive into the deep shit with me. So if you don't want to dive into the deep shit, into the deep end and see what's going on all up in your soul, then just do the app or my level up program is my middle <laughs> offer where we go deeper into a mindset training and nutrition program that progresses over a year. So there's kind of, those are the tiers. It's like entry point app. Okay. I want to go a little bit deeper, but I kind of want to do this on my own and I don't want to invest a lot of money. That's my level up program. And then I want to fucking dive into the deep end Tara. Let's go. That's higher. <laughs> and then yeah, retreats. So that's all I got going on right now. Um, the other thing is my, um, I got my first real big speaking gig, you guys. It's going to be at KetoCon. That's my first time ever speaking on like a big stage like that. So I'm excited because I love that. <laughs> Sorry. Can you guys hear me? Let me know. Um, that's the best get to the root of the issues. So one doesn't regress. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's basically like, I'll be real with you guys. What I do intentionally, if you guys want to know my, <laughs> my secrets, I kind of like wrote people in with what they think they need, which, cause nobody really thinks they need mindset or soul healing. They think they just want to get fit. Just get me skinny, Tara. Get me fit. <laughs> so that's usually the entry point for people. And then once we start touching into the heart space and the soul space, people are like, whoa, dude. I've been, like, bypassing all that shit. <laughs> so that's pretty much what happens every time. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, it, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a health journey. It's, it should be self-honoring. Right? Like, I honor the hell out of my clients. They're 
freaking amazing people, amazing people. They could easily coach me in plenty of areas of life, but I'm just there to facilitate questions for them and keep the keep probing into what I'm hearing from their soul. Right. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, I freaking love my clients so much. Um, yeah. And then there's the podcast. So I guess I'm, I don't know how I shifted into all the sh- shit that I have, but <laughs> if you guys haven't, um, listened to the inside out health podcast, let me know if you guys have feedback or like different ways you'd like me to approach the podcast or different guests you'd like me to have, please let me know, you know, that, that I lose money on the podcast. I haven't put anything behind it. It's truly like I lose money by paying people to edit it and do all the back end work for me. It's truly just because I feel like, one of the blessings that I've had in my life is to be connected to so many incredible people. And I'm like, damn dude, I have all these people, all these people I know, like the least I can do is like share them with others. So I feel like it's a win for everybody, right? That, that guest gets to spread their beautiful message. The listener gets to learn and I get to learn. So I guess my payment is I get to learn from these people. (laughs) But if you guys have any suggestions on the podcast, I know sometimes people have asked me to do solo episodes, which I don't really do. So just let me know on that or if there's specific people you'd like me to interview. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and close it out. I'm going to Moab. I'm doing a mushroom journey this weekend. It's my epic annual trip. I'm very, very, very excited. It is always like life course altering. Um, you do so much and still make time to go to the gym at the crack of dawn. Yeah, I have to, you know, like it's my, no, you know, I honestly, I don't take any calls before 11 o'clock in the morning and I get up at five. That is my, it is my freaking time. It is my soul time. I get up right now. I actually, gosh, I'm telling you guys a lot on this life. I actually started writing what I'm calling my real book. (laughs) So that's been part of my morning routine is an hour of writing. I'm writing a book about, um, my life, not in, I don't mean to say that in like an egoic way. Like I think my life is like so crazy or something, but I feel like I was like (laughs) gifted a lot of traumas (laughs) that a lot of people have had. Um, and then gifted all of these healing modalities and ways out of it because I like to share. I, that's what I feel. Like. I feel like <laughs> I feel like the universe was like, give her a bunch of shit, and then give her all the solutions, and give her the ability to make sense of it all, and be able to, because she'll share it. She'll share it. <laughs> so that's what that's why I'm doing that. So yeah, I get up and I I get ready, meditate, do my gratitude journal. I do my my, my own personal development program that we do in higher. There's like a 90 day personal development program too, and at the end of it, we we keep track on our goals in those four peaks. So that keeps me on point right? It's just, it's little things, right? Little things in my relationship, one relationship goal, one professional goal, one physical goal, and one personal goal. And they're little, it doesn't have to be this. I mean, sometimes they're big or sometimes it's like, I'm going to make an app, you know, (laughs) that was a professional goal for a while. And sometimes it's like, okay, come on, like we're going to do month four, let's go, you know? So it just, it just keeps the ball rolling and keeps, um, keeps me alive, keeps something, something beautiful to like look forward to. And, um, yeah. Keep me, um, keep my life more vibrant. I love it. And then, yeah, then I go to the, well, now I write. So this is what I do when there's something that I'm resisting doing. I put it before the gym because I love the gym and I don't ever want to miss the gym. And so like, if I do this thing where I'm like, you can't go to the gym until you do that. That's, I mean, that's how I wrote short term keto. It's like, okay. So from six to seven, now you're going to write, write and then write at seven. You're done cut it. That's it. Game over. And now you can go to the gym. So that's, <laughs> that's how I get the big things done in my life. And I really recommend it because if you have, you know, how many people do you know, they're like, yeah, I'm going to write a book about it. I'm like, do, 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 do. time's ticking. When are you going to write that book? And <laughs> the question is for real though, like when <laughs> in your day, are you going to write a book? when you randomly feel like it every two months, (laughs) you know? So that's, that's, that's how I create things. And the only way to do that is to get up before everybody else, because once everybody's up and I'm getting all the, you know, calls and texts and kids coming in and blah and all this, that it's just, it's too, um, interrupted. So if you want to create big things in your life, I recommend getting up really early before anyone can interrupt you. And once you get in that flow, you're never going to want to stop. And I'm a night owl by nature. 
definitely. <laughs> um, actually I did like a DNA analysis with self decode. Do you guys know self hacked? That's such a cool website. They have a DNA thing too. And the guy who founded it came on the podcast. And so they gave me their thing and it was like, genetically, it was like, you will likely be a night owl. And I'm like, yep. And like, even my ex-husband, I was texting him earlier about some stuff for the kids some basketball camp or whatever. And he's like, I seriously cannot believe you get up this early now. <laughs> I know. So I'm, when I say that I get up at five and go to bed early, which I got to go because I got to like go home and go to sleep now, but it's like, it's not by nature, but it has become so freaking powerful that I wouldn't change it for the freaking world. It is just like, if any of you have not experienced the power of a morning routine, I cannot recommend it enough followed by the gym. Like if you meditate and you have some sort of like gratitude practice, some sort of personal development practice, and you have that anchoring moment in the morning where you're like creating your life instead of just existing in it, just getting up and going and getting coffee and like, blah, 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 whatever anybody, Oh, what's on TikTok? Like, you know, like stay off your phone and like center yourself. And then you hit the freaking gym and you get in flow state. Oh my God. Like it will change your life and you'll want to go to bed early because you don't want to miss that. You know, and that's what I tell my clients with morning routine. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning of this live of like, instead of being in this, I have to do this. I have to track my calories. I have to do this workout, blah, blah, blah. I always tell my clients, I mean, you don't have to do any of this shit. You don't have to do a morning routine. You don't have to meditate. You don't have to do gratitude. You don't have to do your personal development. You don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to eat anything you don't want to eat. Just if you will give yourself that fully and you just notice how you feel when you do those things and take all the freaking pressure off, you'll do it more because you're like, yeah, but I want to. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> right? And that's how it comes in flow. When it becomes this taskmaster chore, I have to blah, blah, blah. You remove all the joy from it and you'll actually avoid it because when you don't do it, you shame and guilt yourself. Don't do that. Like we're way too powerful for that. You know, the problem is you think you have time. Time is not guaranteed. Go get it. Yeah. You know, I had that moment with myself when, um, earlier in my career, and I was like seeing people in my same field that like had achieved higher than I had. And I'm like, yeah, but dude, like, look what they did. Like, they wrote some books. Have you written a book? They, you know, they created all these things. Like, so if you want to, like, do it. You got to create it. And I'm telling you, if you want to create something in your life, like, you got to set out a specific time that works for you to actually do that. And I really recommend the mornings, especially because we're in that alpha brainwave state in the morning and we're most creative, right? So can't recommend it enough. What's up, Ashley? Good to see you, girl. Um, insomnia is the worst because by the time I can actually fall asleep is around five or six and it makes me sleepy all day. And my sleep anyway is very light. Okay. So for this, um, this is actually from one of my certifications. What is it? My International college of applied nutrition and science. One of the things they recommended for this kind of situation, what well, it's actually like a protocol and what you do is you actually, even though I wouldn't recommend this long term, but you sleep deprive the client. So it's like, okay, you can't wait, fall asleep until six o'clock in the morning. Well, you're going to get up at eight anyway, <laughs> or maybe we'll start with 10. I'm going to get up at 10 and you're only going to have four hours of sleep and you're going to feel shitty. And then the next night you're going to try to go to, you know, you're going to be tired. So you're going to go to sleep a little early. You're not going to go to sleep at like eight though. Cause then you get all messed up. You're going to go to sleep at like two or three, something like that. And then slowly your clock starts to get set in a different pattern. And then other things I recommend is staying off of your phone. A lot of times this happens because of anxiety. People do not feel comfortable in their own body and their own minds and their mind is racing. And so they want to be in front of a screen or anything to distract them from that. And I understand that this is why a meditation practice helps it's really hard when you have anxiety and you're not used to it, right? And you're going to think a lot and it's going to be like, that didn't do anything. Just stick with it. Because one thing that meditation helps you learn how to do is release thoughts. And when you have anxiety, you're, you fixate, you fixate. It's like, oh, I got to worry about all these things. And you learn through meditation. Oh, that's okay that I'm worried about remembering I have to do that tomorrow. Oh, okay. And let it go. Oh, that's, a, yep, I'm, I'm worried about that too. Okay, let it go. <laughs> and back to, oh, there's another one, right? And so you learn how to release thoughts and that actually helps with going to sleep at night because you now have this skill of being able to let things go, let things go. Another practice you can try is called sunset gazing where you literally just watch a sunset, like obviously not burning your eyes, but 
and observe how the earth like let's go with a day it's okay it's okay just let it go tomorrow's another day it doesn't resist it it's not like no weeds it has to stay today <laughs> so it's like it's a reminder of like it's okay to let go and then the last thing is like honestly high dose melatonin <laughs> I know the melatonin and like, okay, you guys want to know my like one, two knockout punch for sleep is high dose melatonin, which actually has a ton of health benefits and the stuff that you've heard about how you can't make your own melatonin and all that. That's all getting debunked. Read Dr. John Lawrence's book, Melatonin Miracle Molecule. He has the best information on melatonin. Um, and he also, I love John Laurent. I'm actually going back out to Sarasota to interview John Laurent and Anthony from Biohacking Secrets and some other guy named Max. And I can't remember his last name right now. Anyway, in like two weeks, I'm going to be back out in Florida interviewing all them. And um, John is like, has the most forward thinking supplements ever. It's called Mitozen, M-I-T-O-Z-E-N.com. I think it's like mitozen.com slash coach Tara or slash coach Tara Garrison. He has a little discount thing for me. It's a small discount. It's only like 5%. His stuff is really expensive, but Hey, it helps a little bit, but his Zen spray, it has ceremonial bay in it. Um, and all other things that help get you into your parasympathetic. It burns like crazy. Your brain will be on fire. You're going to be like, Tara, I hate you. Why would you ever recommend this to me? <laughs> but after the burning goes away, it's a nasal spray. After it goes away, you go into the deepest parasympathetic place. So if you do high dose melatonin and Zen spray before sleep, I promise you, you will fall asleep, right? And the meditation practice will help as well. Um, yeah. Mag oh, and magnesium. Yes. So I take, um, upgraded formulas, magnesium. I'm obsessed with their magnesium. I used to take magnesium glycinate from Metagenics forever. And when I did my hair mineral analysis with upgraded formulas, I saw that I was super magnesium deficient. And I was like, that's crazy. Cause I take magnesium. And then I started taking theirs cause they have the nanoparticle size minerals. And so the absorption rate is like, they can't say a hundred, but like it is, it's like one ten thousandth of the size it's their nanoparticles. So you get all this absorption changed my life. I started getting REM sleep for the first time. Like I am obsessed with upgraded formulas, minerals. And so, yeah, that, I mean, I use it with my clients and there's a discount link on my website if anybody wants to do that. But I am, that is one thing that I take every single night for sure. Um, is magnesium from upgraded formulas. Would love to take melatonin, but it triggers my GERD severely and causes severe vomiting. Okay, well, don't do that then. <laughs> yeah, and one thing I learned from John also on melatonin that was really interesting is he said that melatonin acts on the same pathway as caffeine um, in terms of genetics. So the CYP1A2 and being a fast or slow metabolizer of caffeine. So if like you're one of those people that gets um, is a slow metabolizer of caffeine then meaning like it stays in your system forever. Um, usually those people don't even like drink caffeine because they're like, eh, I don't like coffee. You know, if you're one of those people, he said that like, you'll be the same with melatonin. So it will take forever to kick in. And then it's like still in your system when you wake up. So you feel groggy. So if that's anybody like probably melatonin is not like a fit for you, but I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine. So melatonin is like freaking dream. Um, also Quicksilver Scientific has a liposomal melatonin and probably I'm not important enough to have caused this, but once I like announced that I was taking it and then they sold out and I was like, I hope I didn't contribute to that because I wanted some more. <laughs> it works really fast because it's liposomal. <laughs> so it doesn't have to go through your digestive tract. You take their potassium too. Awesome. Um, IR 2000, when you said, what kind do you take? I, sorry, I don't know. Are you, oh, melatonin. Is that what you're talking about? Um, the one that I normally take is through like my practitioner only account. So I can't like give that to anybody. It's Nutrigine who I use. Um, but you have to get that from a practitioner, but there is a high dose melatonin on Amazon that I found and I don't remember the brand, but it's like 60 milligrams. So if you're looking for like a super high dose, that, there is one on Amazon. Um, okay. I gotta go. I gotta go to sleep soon. So thank you all for joining me. Much love. I got really off from where I started on this, but we're just going to go ahead and close it. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.